Today we are experimenting on co-current and counter-current, shell and tube heat exchanger. Co-current is a flow of material in the same direction and for counter-current it's a flow in an opposite direction. There are two streams that flow through the heat exchanger and heat is transferred from hot stream to cold stream. In the co-current mode, both hot and cold stream enter the heat exchanger in the end and leave the opposite end, while for counter-current mode, it's vice versa. So I'm going to brief you guys about the machine that we're going to use today, which is the shell and tube heat exchanger. So there are two pumps used, which is pump one over here, and the other pump is over here. And this is the cold current and current flow that we'll be using for the cold water and the hot water. The cold water is the shell side of the pump, and the hot water is right here that flows through the heat exchanger, and this is the tube side. So that is shell side, and this is tube side. Okay, so now I'm going to explain about the general startup procedures. Okay, first uh, we will perform a quick inspection on the equipment, and all valves are initially closed except for V2 and V12. So we can see from here, this is pump V2. We have to make sure it is open. V12 is over nearby Anas. Okay. Anas, can you so here is V12 actually, and we have to make sure that this wall will be open. Here's V12. All right. Uh, moving on to the next procedure is the hot water tank. Well, uh, hot water tank and the cold water tank will be filled up with water. Cold water tank will be remain open the valve, and uh, for the hot water tank, the valve will be closed. And the last is the heater will be switched on. Just turn on the switch and turn on the heater from this side. And then we have to set the temperature controller to 50 degrees Celsius. So, as we can see from here, this is only 35.3, so we have to increase it up to 50. So now I will explain about the general shutdown procedure. So, to shut down the equipment, heater, pump P1 and pump P2 and main power is switched off. Okay, turn it off. And lastly, water is drained and all valves are closed. So the water is normally drained from outside here, but now we are still going to continue using it so we won't drain it out. Lastly, I will explain about the process instruments. Okay, valve arrangement for shell tube heat exchanger are V4, V5, V19 and V20 are open. Okay. V4, V5 is behind here, V19 and V20. V20. Okay, so V20, yes, it's already following the arrangement. Okay, and um, V6 to V11 and V21 to V26 are supposed to be closed. Okay, so we can see that uh, V6 is already closed because we already have it. V6 is here. V7 is also closed behind here. So V9 is here. Uh, V8 is over nearby Anas, it's closed also. 21 to 26, then we can see 24, 21 is closed. 23 is also closed. 21 is behind here. It's also closed. So yeah, we have already arranged the fol following the table with the shown. Okay, and the rest of the valves are left alone. I'm going to start with counter current. So for the first one, we have to make sure pump 1 and pump 2 is on. Next, we're going to adjust FT1 and FT2. FT1 being 10, FT2 being 2. Okay, um, so we can see from the scale, we have the detail from unit scale, we can see that FT1 is already at 10 and we can see from the scale of FT2, FT2 is already at 2. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have set it to 10 and 2. Mm -hmm. So that's the hot one and cold one. Yeah. Right. So next, V3 and V14 is adjusted to obtain a desired flow rate. Okay. So once you on the same pump, all the pumps are on, you have to wait for the readings to be steady. Once the reading is steady, you record the reading. Yeah. After that, you change the flow rate accordingly. So and you do the same process again. You, do, you record the reading for PT1, PT2, PT3 and PT4. Okay, so an example yeah. to change the mm -hmm. flow rate is like... So the next flow rate, we need that uh, FT2 is basically 4 uh, liters per minute. So we turn the valve, we set it at 4. Make sure there's no parallax error and, or anything. And then, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let us further check it and now you can see that it's already at um, yeah. 4 liters per minute. Okay. We have to stop, we have to wait for the thing. So from this T1, T2, AT and T4, you, you tabulate the data. Yeah. But it's still fluctuating so you have to wait until it's steady. 
it's enough for cold current, you switch the valve to cold current shell and QP that's been drilled. Okay. So you, do, you, you repeat the same process where FC1 is 10 and FC2 is 2. You wait for the reading to be steady and you record the readings once again. Alright. Okay, about the valve being open and closed, it's all in the lab manual that was given to us. So it's in the table there. So we can look from there. Yeah. So There's labels all over here, the V1, all about valves, the counter and co current. Now all the are steady now. Yeah. Since now it's all steady, you can start recording. Once this is done, you can repeat the same process and change the FT1 to 8 and FT2 to 4. I'm gonna explain the error in experiment. The error found in experiment was due to parallax error. When adjusting the flow rate, eye level should be perpendicular to the scale. This lead to an accurate data being uh, recorded. Okay, so this is the result based on the previous experiment. FT1 and FT2 is the flow rate at the hot side and the cold side. And then TT1 and TT2 is the hot temperature of the inlet and the hot temperature outlet. TT3 and TT4 is the cold temperature inlet and outlet. So to, to start the calculation, we want to change from liter per minute to kg per second and we will do it for the hot side and the cold side according to the conversion here. Moving on, this is what we want to calculate the heat transfer throughout the experiment and of the hot side and the cold side. In order to do that, we need to use the general formula of Q is equals to mc delta t. m is the, ma uh, the mass flow rate based on the hot side or cold side and then cp is the heat capacity of water which is 4.185 and the Temperature difference of hot side, which is TT1 minus TT2. And you are able to get it for the hot side and the cold side accordingly. The next one is we want to calculate the heat loss. The heat loss is given by the formula of hot heat transfer at the hot side minus the heat transfer at the cold side. And you are able to get this value accordingly. And then moving on, the next one is the percentage error of the heat transfer. But the formula is given heat transfer at the hot side minus the heat transfer at the cold side divided by the you transfer the hot side times say 100% and you are able to get the value accordingly the next one is the Q average the Q average is said to be the formula is said to be heat transfer at the hot side plus with the heat transfer at the cold side divided by 2 the next one is the temperature difference at T, uh, T1 so the formula of delta T1 is temperature TT1 at minus TT4 which is the temperature hot in minus the temperature cold out the next one is T2 which is the temperature hot out minus the temperature cold in. And then the next part is the temperature delta T LMTD. LMTD means log mean temperature difference. And the formula is given by T, T, delta T1 minus delta T2 divided by the ln of delta T1 divided by delta T2, which can be obtained above. And I will pass it to my friend to explain forward. Thank you, Ryan. So now, we will further continue with the outer diameter, in, inner diameter and tube length. This tree is needed to calculate the outer surface area, which we use the calculation of pi dl. This is to get the surface area of the pipe. We have calculated for outer surface area and inner surface area. Next, we are going to calculate on the average surface area, where you add the surface area of the outer and inner divided by 2. You get this. Now, we look at the equation that we are supposed to use. U, which means the heat transfer coefficient, equals the Q average, the average of the heat exchange rate, divided by area of the average area of the tube, times the mean temperature. This, you will get a calculation for your heat transfer coefficient. If you do not know what the equations or what values you have recorded, so we are going to start at the basics. This is the general heat transfer equation. So we start with Q equals to U A times delta T. If you reshuffle this equation, you get this. Q stands for heat exchange rate, U stands for heat transfer coefficient, A stands for average area of the tube, and delta T uh, stands for the mean temperature. To conclude, if you are doing this experiment, your basis of conclusion will state that counter current flow has a higher overall heat transfer coefficient than co counter current because counter current flow can transfer rate at a uniform rate than co counter current this is our conclusion thank you for watching